So in terms of headsets, we really didn't see anything. The most that we saw was like a very quick video from Sony just showing like a new headset that they have going on for Enterprise. This looked pretty interesting. I mean, I know a lot of the people that watch my channel are consumers, so maybe it doesn't mean anything for us at the moment. But it is interesting to see that PlayStation is definitely still in the VR or XR space, even though the PSVR 2 didn't have as much of like a splash as we anticipated after it was announced last year. Anyway, the real star of the show at CES this year was um, was augmented reality. It was like augmented reality everywhere. It was very cool. I will say though, outside of augmented reality, oh gosh, the robotics section of CES oh, was so good. So maybe towards the end of this video, I'll show a couple of the cool robots that I saw because man, Oh, that was so cool. Anyway, but let's talk about, let's focus, focus on um, augmented reality. So apparently like Amazon has their own smart glasses. Did you know this? Cause I didn't know this. Um, and they're now on gen three, it's called the Echo Frames. And I saw it at CES. These do not have like any cameras on them. Um, they, they're not augmented glasses. So they're definitely like a step down from the Ray-Ban Metas in terms of what you can use them for. But I guess if you really like Alexa and your whole house is kitted out in Amazon products, then this could be a useful way to control those products uh, easily. The main augmented reality glasses that I think blew everybody away was the X-Real Air 2 Ultra. I did only do like a really quick demo of this, so I can't go into full details, but like these glasses, first of all, they look pretty good considering all the functionality that they have. They have full hand tracking in like a glasses form factor, which is amazing. Um, the glasses themselves look pretty good. They're kind of like an aviator ish style which I like but yeah so in order to do hand tracking obviously they have like cameras already built into there um the colors and the way it looked was pretty good I think the X-Real Air 2 Ultra is like as close as we have ever been to true augmented reality and I think that's pretty exciting and the screens as well like they would stay in place when I would look at them as opposed to say something like the Rokid glasses which I've covered on my channel before where it was like a screen that was always attached to your glasses with the X-Real, the screen would just stay in place so I could go here and the screen would still stay in this place. That was true augmented reality. So that was super cool. Um, I did also try the Ray Neo X2 by TCL. And this is also another pair of augmented reality glasses that are like true augmented reality glasses. Um, unfortunately, the demo I did for Ray Neo only had like, headlocked experiences. So again, when the screen is following you, um, the connection at CES was not too great. Um, their connection wasn't too good. I only got to do headlocked experiences. Um, although they did say that it definitely does have world locked, meaning, you know, something will stay in place and I can move around it and it would stay in that place. Um, they do have world lock applications, but again, I didn't get to try that. Apparently, Vuzix is also there. Um, I didn't get to try a demo in person, but VR Central did. So it's more or less an augmented reality tool to be able to help you out in everyday life. It's just a simple pair of glasses. Most of the time, if you're walking by somebody, you won't even be able to tell that somebody has it on, but it's supposed to be just, you know, more or less like your cell phone. It is a tool to help you go through mm. everyday life. So if I'm speaking to somebody in a different, and they're in a different language and I don't understand what they're saying, they don't understand what I'm saying, you can use your phone with an application that's auto hooked up through Google Translate into the glasses and you can speak to me. It'll translate it on my phone and display it on text in front of my eyes so I can, we can have a full conversation and even though we don't understand each other's languages, it'll have uh, everyday applications for things like uh, directions. So I'm like, I'm lost in the airport. I don't know where to go. It'll have uh, arrows that'll pop up in augmented reality inside the glasses to be able to tell you, you know, take left, go straight, all that stuff. All the images in there are generated through like this uh, bright green lines. So like bright green lines of text or bright green arrows or something. Now on the same wavelength of augmented reality, but not necessarily augmented reality glasses, um, I saw a train or bus window that had augmented reality on it. This was by the Industrial Technology Research Institute. I don't really know what else to say, except like in their demo, you could see like the different train stop. And it wasn't until later that they explained to me why this technology was so 
cool. So in the train ride, like the simulation where I sat there, like I was like, you know, the train was all bumpy. Um, but I was able to see this window with augmented reality on it. There's a camera at the top that's using eye tracking to see where your eyes are. And based on what that camera is seeing, it's adjusting the visuals that you're seeing on the train so that you don't get motion sickness by looking at it. It's so exciting to see augmented reality in the world outside of just augmented reality glasses. Now into some of the cooler VR stuff that I saw. Uh, this is a little unorthodox, so bear with me. Um, but I saw these adjustable prescription lenses for MetaQuest headsets. That was crazy. I mean, it's it's quite thick, so I don't know how comfortable it'll be, especially for people like me with like long eyelashes. But it was cool to see that these glasses, these lenses are fully adjustable. So anybody for any prescription lenses, I mean, I'm sure there's some limitations, but anybody could just adjust these lenses and be able to use anyone's headsets. I thought that was pretty innovative and I just hope that they can get the thickness of it a bit thinner and and I think there's really a gold a golden product here there was this company called Lumen I think they're like a startup company and they're making like what they call glasses for the blind it looks like a VR headset and basically you know if you're a blind person um, and you can't see anything you put this on and it just translates the world for you it's almost like a replacement or an alternative to guide dogs um, which you know I'm actually allergic to dogs so this could be very helpful for a lot of people. I, I thought it was really sweet to um, see applications of like AR and VR uh, for something that's just so it's like such a wholesome application. And so um, I was really excited when I saw that. Now into some of the input systems in VR. <sighs> there was a product called Valkyrie EIR and it was like these things that you attach to your biceps so that when you work out, it's like a TENS machine, kind of like the OO vest, which again, I've also covered on my channel if you want to see. Um, it's like a TENS machine that you attach to your biceps and triceps. So when you're working out in VR, it like activates that muscle and makes you feel like you're really having a workout. How do I say this? It did not feel like I was getting actual resistance from working out. Also, it hurt. Um, like the whole, it just, it like was zapping me, it hurt, I don't know, I just, it was not a comfortable experience and I personally can't see myself using this when working out in VR, I just, I, I, I don't understand this product. Um, sorry. But then there are two really cool inputs that I saw at CES. Okay, there's this company that's a complete startup, they're called Palm Plug, and I think they like blew CES away. This guy, um, I did meet the CEO. But basically, it's like these little attachments that you put onto each fingertip. It has hand tracking, um, it has hand tracking, finger tracking, but it also has haptics on every single finger that you put it onto. A lot like so this can actually be used for any applications. It can be used for like medical um, rehabilitation or it can be used for like with your computer. At least that's what the founder says and what his goal is for this product. But of course, hand tracking and haptics um, is something that we all in the VR industry, I think, love. <laughs> so um, that's completely where my mind went. I think one of the things with hand tracking right now is that you don't really get good haptic feedback. Um, and I know there's alternatives like using, um, like B Haptics Tact Glove, but this is not a glove. It's just pieces that you put on your fingers and they do hand tracking and they do haptics. And it was really cool. I could see this being used for, say, if you're playing Piano Vision playing piano vision on a virtual piano, and then you get like the haptic feedback every time you press the piano key. I thought that was cool. The problem with this though is because like you're just slotting these onto your finger um, and you know, there's a lot of play, like right, the people's fingers have like different sizes. Because of that, like you're not really going to get the most accurate um, like hand tracking on it. And also there's a lot of latency that I noticed, like it just wasn't, it just wasn't picking up my finger movements quick enough. So the second input that I saw that, man, this was 
so freaking cool. You know Ultra Leap, right? So Ultra Leap does um, hand tracking. Uh, they create they create these like little camera pieces that you can attach to different headsets. Typically, they're attached to like Pico headsets, and all of a sudden that enables hand tracking. So any headset that doesn't have hand tracking built into it, um, you can just plop this uh, plop Ultra Leap's um, product onto the front, and that now enables hand tracking. Okay, but that's not the like amazing part, right? Like hand tracking. Oh my gosh. But the cool part with Ultra Leap was the demo that they had. Oh, okay. So Ultra Leap used Toby eye tracking. So that's like this eye tracking software. And then they use their hand tracking software to do the same thing that Apple Vision Pro would do, where you would look at something and then you would do like a micro gesture like this to take, you know, to click on something. That was just such an intuitive and easy interaction. And it just made me wonder, like, why did the Quest Pro, which had eye tracking, which had face tracking, which had, you know, hand tracking, like, why did they never do this? But basically, with Ultra Leap's product, and also if you have, you know, Toby eye tracking or any eye tracking in your headset, you can now recreate how it feels to use an Apple Vision Pro. Um, and I think the main thing with Ultra Leap is that because their cameras are so good, you can do very small gestures. And as you know, if you've ever used a VR headset, you know, doing hand tracking doesn't always work the best. But with Ultra Leap, it was tiny gestures you could do like this or even this, um, and it would pick it up really well. So this was a very quick overview of some of the cool things I saw at CES 2024 in terms of XR. But if you want me to go into any details on any of these, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can make a separate video. I will show you one really cool thing I saw in terms of robotics. Okay, this is so silly, but I saw this robot that could auto clean your pool. I don't have a pool, okay? But bear with me. So this robot would just like crawl up the sides of your pool and clean it and then you know just keep going through your pool and one of the things that i've always wanted was a robot that could scrub my shower or my bathtub clean without me having to do it now obviously this will not be able to do that because it uses the buoyancy of the water in the pool but you know i'm just one step closer to having robots completely take over and clean my house so that made me happy also very very cool innovations in robot mops and vacuums i do love robotics so if you ever want me to do like a robotics video just again let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe for all my future videos